A compelling detective story, a cloak and dagger action and a romantic drama, all these stories were taken from real life. The history of Kazakhstan is inseparable from the world history. Reflections on history, our version. Alfred Brehm, Info Tour around Western Siberia. A gift from Irkutsk. Selfie with Brehm. Dive into the environment. Prophecies of the Shaman. Germany. He always loved to come back home. Both his wife and his children listened to his stories with great pleasure. He had so many plans to put his collections in order because he had 550 specimens of birds, 400 types of fish, 120 forms of mammals. He had to revise pictures, reports, his own notes, a kind of life journal. What an amazing country, he recalled his trip with a smile. When Brehm traveled to Katon Karagai, you know what kind of gifts people gave him? People gave him a royal welcome, an Italian knight in Zaisan, a piano in a yurt, photo reports of the mistress of the governor hunting for Argali, and what did the Siberian shaman predict to the German scientist? The last major trip of Alfred Brehm. A huge pile of rare skins was presented to him, including the skin of a snow leopard. While traveling, Brehm received a nickname, Big Nose. He could even read the Quran. Chapter 1. A Gift from Yekutsk. The building in the style of Russian classicism is the work of an Italian architect. A mansion of the famous merchants and patrons, Sibiri Yakovs and residents of Irkutsk, call it the White House. Within its walls, here on the bank of Angara, the fate of the West Siberian expedition was decided. The promotion of this interesting enterprise from Germany did not justify even the most insatiable expectations, and even then, unexpectedly, it received the richest gift of 20,300 marks. Alexander Sibiriakov turned out to be a generous benefactor. Otto Finch, journey to Western Siberia. The German ornithologist Otto Finch invited on this trip his longtime friend and comrade in his chosen speciality. Alfred, Alfred Edmund Brehm is a well-known traveler who came originally from Germany, a man who is known in history as the author of the famous work, Brems Tierleben. At the time, it was called Animal Life. It was an international bestseller. Brehm gladly agreed. An experienced traveler who's seen Egypt, Abyssinia, Norway, and an eminent scientist who has been a member of the oldest Academy of Natural Sciences in Germany since he was 20 years old. He was an adventurer, a man who was looking for something new. The third person who joined the expedition, and at his own expense, unexpectedly, was the Count Karl von Walburg Seil Trauberg, adjunct of the King of Württemberg. He was some mysterious figure. Graham was a traveler. Fish was a zoologist. He was also a traveler. But what this man did at the expedition, no one knows. The desire to join the well-known ornithologist of German officer is explained solely by the research interest in the search for the northern sea route to Europe. However, this expedition, like all others, was of a complex nature and pursued not only scientific but also political and economic goals. Brehm was just an honest scientist. He honestly collected data on the territory where he traveled, but the results of the data could be used by both geographical societies and general staffs. March of 1876, from St. Petersburg on a sleigh along the Volga, they reached Kazan. From there, the expedition moved to Perm, and then on to Tarantas to Tumen and Omsk. At the end of April, the scientific expedition arrived at Semipalatinsk. Chapter 2. Selfie with Brehm. Through salty dunes, houses and a thick layer of sand in the streets of the city were visible. Welcome to our desert. With these words, the wife of the governor of the region, Lydia Poltoratskaya, greeted the guests. 
Thanks to the extraordinary courtesy of the Poltoratsky family, we had no trouble about food. We were invited to dine with them. It was an important help, but it must remain in second place in comparison to the cordiality which we were generally welcomed in this family. Otto Finch, Journey to Western Siberia. In the governor's house, people spoke fluently in English, French, and what was especially present for Brehm and his colleagues in the German language. Moreover, all the places that the travelers intended to visit, the governor's couple knew very well. Quote, the stories about the dangers of traveling through these wild places seemed incredible, but the excellent photographs taken by the general's wife eliminated every shadow of doubt. He admired Lydia Poltoratskaya. It wasn't the Altai or the Chen Chan. There's a harsh climate, there's rain and snow, and she used a tripod. One of the first female photographers in the Russian Empire and an indefatigable top companion of the husband in traveling around the locations entrusted to him. The governor had to travel every year along the entire border, and sometimes he traveled to the Chinese territories. <laughs> Madame Poltaratskaya even mastered the production of special light-sensitive emulsions. It was only the beginning of photography. She did all the photography herself. Madame Poltaratskaya photographed the German scientists, although where these pictures are now is unknown. What was left is this image, not entirely a selfie, a sketch of the artist, Brehm and Burkucci. The semi-Palatinsk voyage came to an end. A German zoologist disappears in the so-called fireworks, a room for the manufacture of cartridges. His colleague, Finch, processes trophies for museums and zoological gardens. He collected a herbarium and all sorts of different things, like, for example, stuffed animals. Because of the constant work around the hearth, where else he could cut waders and ducks and other birds for scientific purposes, the German scientist received the nickname Bovar, or the cook. In early May, the group went to the governor's planned hunt for Argali. Chapter 3. Dive into the environment. From inspecting a few of Semipalatin's sites to a full immersion into the environment, when they left Semipalatinsk, Zhukov, our former governor, accompanied him. And one evening they were sitting by the fire and suddenly they saw a falcon sitting there and here is a beautiful figure in the gleam of the fire. And Brehm says, I wish I could have a scarecrow like this. And Zhukov says, well, should I shoot? He says, well, it's far away. You won't be able to reach it without getting up from his place. He reached the eye of the falcon. While hunting for Agali, luck was on the side of Brehm. He spent the night in the ornate yurts, had a feast with national dishes, a fabulous pilaf and mutton. There he first tried kumus and participated in a musical holiday. He heard the poem of Kozi Korpesh and Bayan Sulu, local legends and improvisations. In all likelihood, our stay enriched the Kyrgyz Kazakh song collection with a new song in which not love and amorous ventures are celebrated, but the happiness of a stranger with an aquiline nose and a falcon's eye hunting. Otto Finch, Journey to Western Siberia. Alfred Brehm really had a remarkable appearance. A handsome man with a clever, expressive face, a high forehead, blue eyes, and that same eagle nose. Zor Morin is a big nose, as the Kazakhs called him. He had a big nose. He spoke very well and delivered speeches perfectly. He also impressed the local people with the knowledge of the Quran. A German scientist could reproduce more surahs in Arabic than any sultan. He acquired this knowledge while traveling in Africa. In general, legends were composed about the journey to Western Siberia. In any location, the guests were welcomed with great pleasure. Researchers marveled at how fast the news spread through the steppe. Jungari Nalatao, Tarbagatai, and Zaisan. Good Paisan people have shown great respect for us and we did not feel any lack of pleasant conversation partners. 
We were at an evening where dancers waited for us, and there was a piano and fireworks in the house. In our honor, we arranged an Italian night. On this occasion, the public garden was beautifully lit by motley lanterns, and the Cossack chorus delighted our ears with national songs that had such an original charm for Western Europeans. Otto Finch, Journey to Western Siberia. There was another story about a piano. By the way, especially for Europeans, it was delivered to one of the Kazakh villages where the travelers stayed. Local composers also appreciated the instrument and declared that it was a sacred instrument. After all, it had 40 copper strings, a magic number. This is most likely a legend, but a material subject of history. And this is a biscuit maker, which belonged to the Kaklovs family. They say that in the mornings it was customary to drink tea with homemade croutons. The guests ate and praised the taste, and the guests were all celebrities. Those who visited the Kaklovs ate from this very biscuit. Otto Finch mentions Andrei Stepanovich. Respectfully, he was a passionate ornithologist. He gave a lot of information about this place and helped with an experienced guide, a hunter. Alfred Brehm especially wanted to hunt for the Ular. The Ular is a wild turkey which inhabits the mountains. He wrote in his memoirs that the local hunter Mirza Shaldiyad had turned the skin of a wild camel and a kulan. The journey was marred by a quarrel. They say that Brehm and the head of Zaisan region, Kaklov, had a conflict. What exactly happened is not known. Something happened. Someone says that the Germans deceived them in something. I don't know. Maybe they bought something and didn't pay for it. I don't know. Because Andrei Stepanovich had all kinds of artifacts, he extracted animals, he was a collector, he sent collections to the Academy of Sciences. Perhaps this is just another legend. In Kaklov's notes, there was no disrespect even between the lines. Brehm is generally remembered as an outspoken and straightforward person, a humorist, an interesting conversationist who does not tolerate flattery, and the famous zoologist expressed his services very modestly. I know that he wrote some poems, funny ones about people whom he met. People, events, cities with geometries like latitude, longitude and descriptions Uskamenogorsk, although it is improperly located, represents a friendly-looking shopping mall with bazaar and many beautiful wooden buildings. We went to Uskamenogorsk, we traveled to the border with China and even visited Chukachak. I wrote these lines from our nest where we stopped. We are embarking on a journey today since we have little time. In fact, the trip will be more and more like a witch hunt because of the huge distances which we have too little time for. It's a pity that we slip through the interesting places without stopping. There's no possibility even to put them in a diary. The steps capture me more and more. What a magnificent material for lectures. From Alfred Brehm's letter to his wife. Semipalatinsk, Sergiopil, Lepsi, Zaisan, Zeranovsk, this is only in Kazakhstan, from Turkestan to Alatau and a significant part of Siberia to the Karskoye Sea. In a few months, travelers have overcome more than 15,000 kilometers. Epilogue, prophecies of a shaman. In the Siberian wilderness, they had a chance to meet with a shaman. The old man predicted that Alfred Brehm and his companions would return to the Altai lands the following year, that the travelers would be rewarded by two emperors, and the entire world will be admired with their printed works. But the prophecies did not come true completely. Finch was the one who wrote most of the time, not Brehm. A wonderful book, Journey to Western Siberia, in 1876. Unfortunately, Brehm himself did not leave detailed records about Western Siberia. Only a few articles were published. The scientist admires the nightly exercises of the Kazakhs, writes about the Baiga, Berkut hunting, everyday life and family values of the steppe people. Even for such a hunter as Brehm, who traveled the whole world, sometimes on foot, hunting everywhere, it was amazing for him. The country of the Seven Rivers, quote, no less attractive than the best valleys of the French Vosges and Gard in the Bavarian Palatinate, 
a trip to this country he considered to be the most significant and interesting trip in his life. A country where, contrary to the shaman's forecasts, he no longer had a chance to return. <laughs>